Hello, dear viewers of the Day TV channel. We continue our series of weekly programs with Doctor of Military Sciences. Deputy President of the Russian Academy of Missile and Artillery Sciences, Konstantin Valentinovich, Sivkov. Hello, Konstantin Valentinovich, Dortai. Hello, Igor Sergeyevich. Hello, dear viewers. And at the beginning of the program, as always, I remind our viewers of the importance of subscribing to the Day TV channel on all platforms. This is YouTube. This is Zen. This is Vkontakte. This is Odnoklasniki. And on the Day TV website. Yes. And on the Telegram channel. Of course. Also, Day TV tomorrow. Plus, on Konstantin Valentinovich's Telegram channel, and on your humble servant's Telegram channel. All links are below in the description of this video. And now let's move directly to our program. Konstantin Valentinovich. A lot has happened between our broadcasts. Just like from a horn of plenty. I would say, news related to the topics of our programs have been pouring in. I mean first. Macron made a breakthrough threat to Russia. If the front is breached and so on. Then French troops will appear in Ukraine. Then there were several leaks of information to Western media that the European Union will consider the breakthrough of the front by the armed forces of Ukraine as a reason to introduce European armies into Ukrainian territory. And in addition, if an attack is launched from Belarusian territory. And then we open the news and read that exercises will be held in the Southern Military District, where the use of tactical nuclear weapons by the Russian army will be practiced. And it is immediately stated that this is a response to provocative statements by European leaders. And what's more, it is immediately stated that this is a response to the provocative statement of European leaders. And just a few hours later, the British ambassador to Russia is summoned over the statement of Minister of Foreign Affairs Cameron, who, you may recall, said that Kyiv has the right to use British weapons to strike any targets on Russian territory. And this was immediately announced to the ambassador after the declaration of the exercises. This was also officially reported by TASS that in case of such actions, Russia reserves the right to strike back at targets in response to strikes on targets in British territory. What could be called an abundance of twists and turns? Konstantin Valentinovich. You have the floor. Ah, uh, Miss Samuel. I don't even know if you will now say that it's worth it for me to repeat the justification that the West will continue to escalate tensions, that it will maintain any price of Ukrainian pro-Staru. Ah. Lol. Nil. Briefly. Because not all viewers who watched the previous. What? I'm Nene. Well. Very briefly. Because not all viewers who watched the previous ones are necessarily watching now. Yes, Kultral. If Ukraine is lost. It will be the heaviest geopolitical defeat for the West. The West's chances of resolving the issue with Russia by taking it under control, bringing its puppets similar to Zelensky to your territory, will not work. And this means only one thing, that the West, as we know it, will block its own existence. Because not slowly, after some time, naturally, maybe in five, ten, Wow. Fifteen years. It will be inevitable. Just as freshwater fish cannot live in salt water. Civilization has existed for 500 years as a colonial entity. Well, a collection of colonial powers that plundered the entire planet except for Russia and the Russian Empire. It will not be able to survive in a multipolar world. Maintain its standard of living. Quality of life and everything else. It will have to join the ranks with everyone else. 
and considering that the resources of this civilization are limited, the standard of living of this civilization will not be very high. Therefore, there is no other option for the West but to escalate further, expanding the zone of conflict. In addition to this chain of events, I can add one more point, that in very recent times, Finland stated that Russia was operating in the GPS in the Finnish Gulf. Expect this in conjunction with the alleged damage to the gas pipeline from the Baltics to Finland, closing off this region, especially since representatives of the Baltic states constantly voice concerns about Russian ships in the Baltic Sea. As you know, the Baltic states are one of the so-called ideological strongholds of Western civilization. The precursors to the types of Western civilization that articulate the questions and ideas that are then realized in life after some time. And as you know, the Baltics are one of the so-called strongholds of the theostrategic part of Western civilization. The primal types of Western civilization that voice the questions, the ideas, which are then realized after some time in life. That's it. So everything is quite expected and the appearance of the French forces, initially, and the subsequent appearance of other troops, it should be kept in mind that the French army, precisely the army already, because the foreign region is part of the French army, has already suffered losses. According to reports from our agencies, our military sources, 35 people have either died or been injured in the territory of Donbass more specifically in the territory of Ukraine, there in the area of Belgorod, I think so, in the adjacent region and Kharkiv region. These troops engaged in combat with our fighters, suffered heavy losses, bled, wood, rifles were captured. They also suffered losses in the area of Chasov Yar, according to reports from Pegov, a journalist a military correspondent, that, where they also came into firefight with our fighters, suffered losses, and fled. The total losses are estimated at 35 people. These are very significant losses. This indicates that these are no longer just 100 military instructors, opponents, and drone management specialists. These are already frontline units, and their total number can reach up to 1,500 people. What is the danger? Mr. Kazakh Valentinovich, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but there is a message from the French MIT that their foreign legion is not on Russian territory. A. V. Savinov Leitinovich, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but there is a message from the French MIT stating that their foreign legion is not present on Russian territory. By the way, this is also an indicative thing, and I associate it with the decision of our president to conduct exercises on practicing the use of nuclear weapons. Then we... Let's talk about two things right now. Igor Sergeyevich. First, dot. What is the danger of the appearance of NATO forces? How could the situation develop? Second, what is the difference between tactical nuclear weapons? And what is strategic nuclear weapons? To Lauren well. And then one more question. And we will talk about the people in the process. So, Zilo, the first thing I want to say regarding the dynamics of development, the probable dynamics of the situation if NATO forces appear here. With the appearance of NATO forces on the territory of Ukraine, when they start suffering losses from the Russian army, the question arises of the need to cover them without achieving air superiority, or at least local air superiority. Solving this task is impossible, covering their troops. Therefore, in order to do this, NATO will have to conduct an aerial offensive operation. In this theater of military operations, its operational capacity is small in comparison. Its operational capacity is small. The maximum they can deploy is about a thousand fighters. 
bombers, and other combat aircraft. Nin. This is 1,500 to 2,000 cruise missiles of different classes and hundreds of drones. This is my rough estimate. Why are these maximum indicators simply not enough? Uh, therefore, it is absolutely clear that we will be able to repel such forces completely. This means that the losses in repelling such an enemy strike will be unacceptable. Based on the experience of Arab-Israeli wars for the United States, the losses will be within 15 to 20 percent. Why? This means that 150 to 200 aircraft will be destroyed. These are very large losses. In such a situation, what remains for the leader of the West when their air offensive operation failed? There is already direct confrontation with Russia, and the aviation has suffered very heavy losses. In this situation, what remains for the leader of the West when their air assault operation failed? With no direct confrontation with Russia, and their aviation suffered heavy losses, what remains? Only one option, to come and use tactical nuclear weapons. Tactical nuclear weapons can only be used by Western countries through aircraft, not along tactical, not strategic lines, because Europeans do not have missiles there. The U.S. and Tomahawks will not back us up for the simple reason that it would mean a strike on Americans with our nuclear weapons. NATO aircraft have limited combat effectiveness in the Russian air defense zone. Moreover, in the event of a failed air assault operation, there are practically no chances for a breakthrough by an aircraft carrying nuclear weapons. They are minimal. If they strike, they will mostly target areas where their air defense is strong. Where our air defense is not yet strong enough in Ukrainian territory. Naturally, in response, we will also use nuclear weapons, tactical ones. The range of our tactical nuclear weapons is much wider, and it has much greater capabilities in overcoming ABM Pro. It is enough to say, for example, that a missile from Kandahar, the so-called quasi-ballistic missile, following a complex trajectory, is not affected at all by any ABM Pro systems. The theater of war where Western countries and even the USA are deployed. This means that we guarantee strikes on objects on the territory of Germany. Poland. Die. Well. Nyen. Well. From all sides on all those countries that allow themselves to use their aircraft from their own territory against our troops, and especially those who attempt to use nuclear weapons. And this means that we will guaranteed strike targets in the territory of Germany. Poland. Die. Well. Well. From all sides. In all those countries that allow themselves to use aircraft from their territory against our troops, and even more so against anyone who tries to use nuclear weapons. Why me? Konstantin Venkinch. Sorry to interrupt, but I have a question I must ask you. The thing is, nuclear weapons in Europe exist, besides the United States, only in France. What weapons will they use if as you rightly say. The Americans do not provide their tomahawks. Hey. What weapons will they use if Americans, as you rightly say, do not provide their tomahawks? The question is that the Americans have bombs. B-61, modification 12. And the Americans can allow the Germans to use this weapon as the aircraft of Germany. Denmark, Dada, Netherlands, Italy, 
and Belgium are optimized for the use of American nuclear weapons. So, formally, they will be used from the territory of these countries. Although we all know perfectly well that this is American nuclear weapons. But if these aircraft are destroyed before leaving, or the deadline for completing their tasks, then we may not strike America. We may simply limit ourselves to the territory of Germany. That is, from those countries that produce these articles, carrying this nuclear weapon to Sofia. For example, such dynamics. I draw your attention to the fact that with the appearance of these NATO troops, the situation enters a phase of uncontrolled escalation when one action of one side forces the other side to escalate. Because the alternative solution to this escalation would be a military political defeat of this country. That's all. Therefore, what was announced today by the French foreign minister, immediately after the statement by our president about the start, not the statement, but the decision of our president to conduct these exercises on the use of tactical nuclear weapons, is a quite expected reaction to our action. So, they listened to our message. They understood that we convincingly demonstrated our determination to use tactical nuclear weapons in case they decide on any more serious actions. So, they listened to our message. They understood that we convincingly demonstrated our determination to use tactical nuclear weapons in case they decide to take any more serious actions. And they chose the path of escalation. This is good. This is very good. I want to note and emphasize that the key role in this matter was most likely played not so much by politicians, since French and other European politicians are adventurers, often foolish and unwilling to assess the real balance of power and consequences of their actions. Most likely, uh, they did this under pressure and on the recommendations of the NATO leadership from the U.S. Therefore, my respect goes to the leadership of the U.S., and the leadership of the NATO countries, wisely refraining from discussions about sending NATO troops to Ukrainian territory. Now, a little about what tactical nuclear weapons are. The capabilities of this weapon are much broader than strategic. Many believe that with tactical nuclear weapons, there are fewer nuclear warheads, meaning the power of this weapons is not as great. Tactical nuclear weapons have the same standard equivalent as strategic weapons in terms of mass, since the warheads on ballistic missiles, both ours and American, are mainly in the range of 100 to 200 kilotons, not more. For example, tactical nuclear weapons have the same equivalent by reducing the number of warheads on strategic missiles. Warheads of medium and even large calibers can be installed meaning around 500 kilotons, and even in the megaton range. Typically, small caliber warheads are currently mainly used because by using these small caliber warheads in greater quantities, a significantly larger area of damage can be achieved compared to using one or two large or medium caliber warheads. As a rule, small caliber warheads are mostly used nowadays because by using these small caliber warheads in greater numbers, a significantly larger area of impact is ensured compared to the impact of one or two large or medium caliber warhead. Therefore, it is simply advantageous to use an increase in the area of impact. With small caliber ammunition, the same warheads are used in tactical nuclear weapons. That is, ammunition. Warheads ranging from 50 kilometer to somewhere around 200 kilotons. Nada, no. In other words, all talks about them being less dangerous. That's from Lukaevs. That's not knowledge. And see. What is this? The tactical nuclear weapons differ from the strategic ones only in the range of fire. Only the range of fire. And nothing more. Another point is the conditions and mechanism of activating it. Strategic nuclear weapons. According to the agreement since the times of Brezhnev and Nixon, including Oz Iwan 
Daran Sua have special conditions. Technical conditions. Excluding the possibility of unauthorized use. So I will summarize. You are well aware of the so-called black briefcase. It is called Shegit for us. And for the Americans as well. With which a special person accompanies our president and only he can authorize the use of strategic nuclear weapons. However, there are no technical mechanisms ensuring centralized use of tactical nuclear weapons. There they operate on organizational principles. This means that the command for the use of tactical nuclear weapons is also given by the president. But it does not go through technical means that unlock the combat units. But through regular communication channels. And the unlocking of combat units is carried out on site with no further consequences in the area during the preparation for the use of this nuclear weapon. The range of the tactical nuclear control spatter is limited there from a few to several thousand kilometers. These are cruise missiles such as Tomahawks or our calibers in the nuclear version. There are such examples. Or the X-55 aviation. Respectively. Accordingly. These are aircraft carriers of nuclear bombs or nuclear missiles with a small missile range. These are aircraft of tactical combat qualification or according to our classification, front or operational tactical aviation. For example, the ASU-27, SU-34. They have 16 to 35 accordingly. These are radio-controlled operational tactical missiles. They do not have such missiles. As far as I know, they have not yet considered the use of nuclear weapons. These are missiles for operational tactical radio-electronic warfare. Ours are from Condor. They do not have such missiles. As far as I know, Atakmos has not yet been considered as the use of nuclear weapons. In principle, it can be put on this nuclear weapon, but it is an American missile. Really not only from America anymore. So it is unlikely to expect and mention the use of these missiles in theater operations. These are torpedoes and anti-ship missiles of the fleet. They too can carry nuclear warheads. These can be nuclear warheads of different types. Here is an example of such a spectrum of tactical nuclear weapons that can be put into action. In the exercises that are now being conducted, Wailingora, they will work out the entire spectrum, the whole chain of actions for the preparation and use of tactical nuclear weapons. In the event of a likely collision with the enemy during external combat operations, here is an example of this scenario. One is Konstantin Valentinovich, please tell me. I know you have limited time. In your opinion, how likely is it now that all of this will grow into real implementation? What is the likelihood that in the West, primarily in Europe, they will put on the brakes? It's one thing for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to make a statement, but we know that statements directly opposite to those from France sometimes come out. So, on this topic, I said, Ah! What our leaders have started to demonstrate is determination to strike the territories of European countries. This concerns the United Kingdom. What we have just expressed. And the transmission itself. And the fact that we have just conducted this exercise certainly serves this territory. The fact that Mid France made such a statement indicates that it had an impact. Let's hope that it will continue to have an impact. Now. Thank you. Konstantin Valentinovich, I know you are in a hurry, so I thank you for taking the time to connect with us and explain to our viewers everything related to this new twist in the escalation of the conflict, tactical nuclear weapons, and so on. I thank you and remind our viewers. On the air of DEN TV was a doctor of military sciences, deputy president of the Russian Academy of Rocket and Artillery Sciences, Konstantin Valentinovich Sivkov.
Goodbye. Range.